This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. This is the show where we talk with pro wrestlers and people around indie wrestling in and around the Pittsburgh area, all over the country, whoever we can talk into coming in the studio. And this week, uh, this is going to be a good one uh, as well. But first, please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, check out the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Speaker, iHeartRadio, and the uh, Google Play Podcast as well as the video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube and Facebook page. You can drop us a line at goodtimes at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0. Let us know uh, who you think we should have on the show. We take recommendations. We just had some people on recently. Uh, actually, a lot of them this year. Uh, it got filled out really nice with uh, uh, recommendations from you, the fans, listeners of the show. And we really do appreciate that, helping us expand beyond our bubble here in the greater Pittsburgh area or whatever we may be watching. Because there's so much indie wrestling all across the country, all around the world, really. Uh, we love to, uh, you know, just have a nice variety of people that we're chatting with here on the show. Um, and also, shout out to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. You guys can support everything we're doing here. Uh, different Patreon levels there. Get you, you know, some extra goodies here and there as well. And we appreciate everybody that's supporting the Wrestling Mayhem Show network there. And you can check out everything else at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Midweek War, the main show that we do every Tuesday night at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, and so much more. Uh, so this week, uh, we're having somebody else's, also their rookie year here uh, in pro wrestling. We've had a lot of, because there's been a lot of good rookies this year, to be quite honest. And uh, this week is no different as Calvin Couture joins us. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> if you're on audio, he is full. He is fully in bow tie, sparkly shirt. Always in in high competition with locked and loaded for best dressed on the show. I think I look a little better, but locked and loaded did look good too. I'll give it to them. There I'll you go. That's that's going to be a new Mayhemy uh, category. I think this year is okay. best dressed guest. Um, and now that that, that bar has been risen and, and, and everybody used to just come in t-shirts and jeans. Uh, so I appreciate, I appreciate that as well. So, so Calvin, a little, uh, break the ice question, uh, for, for everybody, uh, to get a little, get to know you. What is your earliest memory of, um, pro wrestling? I knew you were going to ask me this question, uh, sword whenever I was on my way over here. So I was actually thinking about it and I can't really pinpoint one memory that sticks out. Um, my dad was always a fan, so he always had it on. So I can't pinpoint exactly one memory, but one of the biggest memories that I do have was I had a VHS tape of a lot of the early Monday night raw circa SummerSlam 93. So a lot of what I remember of that tape is the Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty intercontinental title feud that they kind of had now i can't remember if both of the matches they had were on that vhs but i do remember whenever marty won the title with the mr perfect uh towel throw and so that that's kind of what i always connect with i guess mm -hmm. is, is that that moment in and those types of the, the early monday night raws is kind of what i remember was this like a tape of like recorded episodes at the mm -hmm. time okay yeah so my dad would record some of the episodes um no commercials which is pretty awesome uh and there was probably about i want to say six or eight on there it was a good it was a good few hours so i feel like i had the same situation because i didn't have pbs and one of my relatives gave me like tapes of sesame street mm -hmm. and mr rogers similar situation like also, mine, mine was a little better, a little, little more inspirational <laughs> with yours. Yes, <laughs> I did not become a puppet wrangler. Uh, so <laughs> in this life, at least. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, so so how did you go from there to, you know, the idea of wanting to get in the ring for this? Um, I've always wanted to get in the ring. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's always been a dream of mine. And I think I just got to the point where, you know what? I was sick of wondering what if. 
and I think I'm a pretty unique person in general. So why not take my unique abilities elsewhere and try something a little different and, uh, you know, share my, uh, myself and, and what I am with the world and doing that through the, uh, wrestling realm, I think is something I've always wanted to do. So I just said, why not just take the dive? And if I end up, uh, you know, hitting the ground of that cliff, then mm-hmm. so be it. But at least I took the dive. You did. And you're with the IWC school. And so we talked to many students, Katie Arquette, who you're doing stuff with, we'll get to in a moment. Um, you know, uh, uh, uh geez, can't remember what, there's so many people coming out billy ruxman jinx uh you know a, a lot of people we've talked to on the show um what is it about this class because it feels like it feels like there's a lot of talent just hitting the ground running this year we're i want to say we're the land of misfit toys mm-hmm. to be completely honest with you um we're all shapes and sizes mm-hmm. we all bring something different to the table um I, I just honestly think that we bring something that IWC has never really seen before. Um, each one of us collectively has something unique, something different. And just being that group, we collectively are just something that isn't always seen in the wrestling business and um, a lot in the Pittsburgh area. So I just think that that kind of sets us apart a little bit versus uh, maybe some other classes and not putting anything against other classes because that school has put out so much talent, talent that I look up to, talent that you know continuously goes above and beyond. But I just think we were a different group of people that kind of came together and wanted to dream. And definitely, yeah, so definitely a variety of people coming out there. Um, I don't want to say, I don't want to say gimmick heavy, but like, personality heavy because it feels like a lot of people come out of wrestling school and they're like guy in tights right or girl in tights and then and that's about it and it seems like you guys definitely you know I, you know obviously you know you came right out with a bow tie and flashy stuff right um tell me a little bit about you know who you are in the in the ring there and how that can kind of came about for you who i am in the ring um kind of who I am in life you know Mm -hmm. I mean I I've always been a fan of wearing the bow tie I always like to dress a little nicer I always like to present myself at you know the highest capacity as possible because you know you have one life and if I want to look good and try different things and wear different things and see what happens I'm going to do it Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it and I don't care what anyone says about it you know I'm going to put myself out there and people like it they do if they don't they don't what you see is what you get with me and you know that's kind of what i put in the ring that's awesome that's awesome and of course you're teaming up like we mentioned with katie arquette Mm -hmm. you know kind of have this kind of hollywood you know uh, fabulous vibe to you kind of going on here uh and it's kind of pretty cool that you guys have kind of connected on that i always say uh, i know you brought up the class i always say that she was probably the one person in the class that I would have been friends with outside just mm. from our just our similar interests things that happened and I think that shows in the ring mm. I think that shows with everything that we do that you know we're really a unit and and we kind of have that bond awesome awesome and of course that led to you got involved with the cage match uh, we talked to her right before her match with Lufisto mm. and now you know kind of seeing how that went out and I'm glad she's still walking uh <laughs> After that uh but but you got involved on in, pretty involved in into the cage yourself um that i did um and mind you this is seven six months into your career correct officially in the correct ring. um i wasn't expecting lefisto to get up that quickly mm-hmm. and um I, I i did pay for it a little bit but you know what can i say um the queen of hardcore, the queen of the cage. I mean, I, I just chalked that one up as uh, Holly Qu- would could sure just, um, you know, gonna, didn't have it that night, but, um, you know, Katie's still standing, so that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. Um, there was another night that, that stuck out um, for me with you, a conversation I had with you. Um, and it was actually a show you weren't on. Okay. Where we were in Wheeling, and uh, Ricky Steamboat was, was uh, famously late for it and ran in did some good stuff but uh you know we talked about afterwards like you you got to have the car ride with uh ricky steamboat 
Correct. Uh, that night. And and uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Because you, you were really, really big on that experience when I talked to you. It was one of those experiences being a few months in that I never thought I would have. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I would just do that as a favor because, uh, you know, who doesn't want to sit in the car with Ricky Steamboat? For, um, for about an hour, I believe. For, right? for about an hour. <laughs> and just picking his brain, asking him questions. Mm-hmm. Um you know, just about simple stuff, like what I would do as a character in this situation, um, you know, and just what he would do differently. And and he really gave me a lot that I, I try to keep with today. Um, a lot that you don't think about, really, whenever you're out there, or what you're doing, and it's just simple stuff that I think kind of gets not thrown under the rug, but you don't really think about because, you know, you have so many things going on at once when you ever you are in the ring and whenever you are who you are, it your mind's going a mile a minute and you just don't think about the simple things. And he was kind of beating, not beating into me, but continuously saying, you know, you've got to think of how would you handle this situation, not just as a performer, but in real life. Mm-hmm. So he kind of really hit that home and just, I mean, Hall of Famer. I mean, it speaks for itself with him. He just has so much knowledge and a trainer, a former trainer in NXT, like he has all this knowledge and it's just small things that you wouldn't think about. And it was really cool because he was giving me tips a lot during the weekend, just small things that I would run by him. And it was, it was really, it was, I once in a lifetime, to be honest with you. That's awesome. Um, bow tie question. Okay. Go first for it. of all, first of all, they're all tied. You know, you know how to, bo- you actually know how to tie a bow tie or I do. Okay. I do. Um, but you know, with tying bow ties, it's, it's a little more of a risk of falling off the matches <laughs> and I'm not trying to get choked up on my opponents. Uh, I'm not trying to give my opponents any leverage mm-hmm. in whatsoever with uh, a tied bow tie. And, and, and you're wearing it during, you're wearing it in the ring. And I do that remember, I you know, growing up watching wrestling, I remember the old, uh, IRS or Erwin R. Scheisser and, and the, you, you always grab the tie. You got a little bit less, but you still got kind of a grab point there, don't you? None of my opponents have ever tried. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they did, that might be an issue. Hopefully none of them are watching now your potential future opponents. At least maybe one's out there. Bring it uh, on. <laughs> Try to touch my bow tie and see what happens. See what happens. Um, do, you, do you have a collection? Are these special wrestling ties or... Oh, I have a collection of bow ties for nice. sure, for sure. Yeah, if uh, I have some early, uh, some early pictures of of some of my bow ties, I'll have to share with you, Sorg. There you go, there you go. Some some classic, classic couture. Some classic couture, exactly. Classic couture. I apologize. I realize I've been saying it wrong this entire time. You're fine. Couture, couture. You can say it however you want to say it. Sure. The name, the name means the same. <laughs> All right. So, what are you watching these days? What's kind of gotten your attention? I mean, you know, being, um, you know this early in your career has mm-hmm. got to be somebody you're kind of inspiring by these days. Right. To be honest, work, I like a lot of old, older, older stuff. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm um, right now I'm watching a lot of early nineties. Um, you know, I, I really have been enjoying watching Dean Malenko. Um, really for me, it's guys that have been a little smaller in the industry, but have had so much power and have really been able to be a threat. Um, because I know I'm smaller, but you know, people need to realize that I am a threat and I will do whatever it takes to win. So I, I've been watching a lot of older stuff, but, um, I actually also have been watching a lot of early, early NXT stuff too. Um, I, I kind of came across that on the network and thought that was very interesting and just p- trying to pick a few things up from there as well. Kind of like pre WWE network, mm-hmm. like still on um, cable or pre, like I would say, um, whenever Tyson Kidd was pretty relevant on there mm-hmm. and, um, you know, before a lot of the great, call-ups. great matches on it. Yeah. With him. Bo Dallas. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe Seth Rollins was still down there then as well. Biggie, um, a lot of that stuff, whenever like Raquel Diaz was still around on there. Um, those types of stuff, um, really getting into that. Um, you know, and then of course, um, everything that, you know, comes across my TV, Fan of Ring of Honor. I try to catch that every week and um, just to see what else is out there, to be honest with you. Awesome. Try to watch everything and anything. Say so again, still kind of early in your career, but what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling so far? Ooh, um, 
the best thing is you never know what's going to happen if you go to an event, um, even just to spectate. You never know what will happen. Um, that's kind of the worst too, because you never know what will happen and what you'll be prepared for. Um, but I would definitely say the best thing is is the relationships and just the people that you talk to mm-hmm. and everything that you kind of see. Um, probably one of the worst things. I don't. I really don't know what the worst thing would be. Um, I would say personally. For, for being a smaller guy, I think people underestimate what I can do. Mm-hmm. And I think that might be one of the, the worst things right now. Um, but I still have a lot to prove. And, uh, you know, as soon as I keep getting better and uh, being able to get more opportunity to show how much of a threat Calvin Couture really is, I think mm-hmm. people, you know, will, will see a little more of me and, you know, we'll see what happens from there. It's definitely, I guess I've seen you in a few different situations over the year, uh, including one of my favorites. And this is where I think I, I, I got on the, the, the Calvin train here was um, seeing you against Beastman uh, at a uh, mm-hmm. charity show a few months ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was very entertaining, uh, a lot of fun, and, and, and kind of been paying a little bit more attention since. Um, what it, you, you mentioned a little bit about, like, you never know what to expect. You know, what is uh, kind of the craziest thing where, you know, kind of a maybe other than Steamboat uh, and having a conversation with him for an hour uh, that you're like, I can't believe I'm here for this um this weekend this weekend um versus the platinum world tour Mm -hmm. i never thought that i would ever be squaring off against dylan and ray lynn and i was there and it made it even better that katie was right next to me Mm -hmm. so i think that was definitely one of those situations that i would never have expected um and it happened there you go. I mean, Dylan, a guy that's been on WWE TV, you know, he's been a lot of sp- a lot of places here in his career. So definitely, and and I think he has more places to be going. Absolutely, and um, even learning from him is amazing. That's great. So, where can people find you online? People can find me on oh. Twitter. Oh. oh, wait, wait, wait. We got a question. Uh, we got we a, question a question first. I didn't realize. Uh, wait, oh, hold on. Let me give you a mic. Chad, Chad is hanging out in the studio. What do you got? Oh, well, that's the wrong microphone. I'm sorry. Try it again. You're killing me, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, what is it's your late. favorite move that you do not perform? Ooh. That's my favorite question to ask. My favorite move that I do not I'm perform. I'm going to have to add that to the lineup. Because Obviously, you do moves that you like to you know, perform. Right. But what's your favorite move that you do not currently perform? That's a really good question. Um, Now, do you mean currently perform as you know i i just haven't done it in the ring yet do you mean like um it's not part of your your regular my moves, normal your okay. new move set whether you would do it or whether you wouldn't do it there's right. something that you like that you you don't currently have in your move set i would like to say power moves <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um there's not too many times i can i can bust out a power bomb um and i know it's it's really dangerous and you know i would probably you know, I don't know when I would do it, but I, I really think the idea of a Powell driver is is very um, interesting. But I mean, it's also dangerous. So um, I would say a Powell driver. I think that's a classic move that obviously there's reasons why it's not done as yeah. much anymore. But that's definitely something that I think I would would like to kind of get in there because you can like that. Yeah, I believe Katie's was a moonsault. I believe that's what her answer was for that question. Moonsault. A moonsault. I would do hers. that too. I think I could pull that. Yeah, I think she said she was working up towards it, but that was her favorite move that she didn't do. So moonsault. a very classic, like the moonsault's a pretty, pretty it's power driver. I like these answers. <laughs> Simplicity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like the old school. This is yeah. These are moves I like. Because think of how much a power bomb used to mean. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I think lately, for me, I've been thinking more about moves that mean a little more than, you know, just doing, you know, like like, like a flip. Like, I want the fans to remember something. I want yeah. them to remember me for something a little different. And I try to be classic and really just show who I am through my movements and my moveset. And, and like you said before, you would get some of that from watching Dean Malenko right. and stuff because 
yeah, there was the simplistic moves, but they said a lot in what they did and how you used them. Right. Correct. So, yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that that's that's kind of where I I think I'm trying to take my style a little bit too is, um, you know, because I. I think people think they look at me, they think I, you know, doing flippy shit and don't get me wrong. I can do flippy stuff, but when it comes down to it, uh, you know, I want to surprise them a little bit. Right. I want to take them off their guard. Right. Right. All right. So where can people find you online? People can find me on Twitter at Calvin underscore underscore Couture, uh, Instagram Calvin Couture and on Facebook to shoot a like over my page, Calvin Couture. Awesome. And of course, regularly you're showing up in IWC. Anywhere else you're popping up? Um, regularly popping up in Black Diamond. And uh, you never know where, where you're going to see me next. Awesome. So go check him out. Again, he's, if you see him on the card, I think you're going to be very entertained by him. Uh, follow him. Uh, a lot of fun stuff on the internet as well. Thank you so much for joining us. No, oh, You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And uh, of course, you can check out everything and all the rest of the interviews over at Indie Wrestling. Uh, I'm sorry, Indie Mayhem Show on wherever you find podcasts or your video shows uh, for the Wrestling Mayhem Show, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And check out the back catalog. We have 100 and, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 some uh, great interviews there going all the way back. And a bunch of people that are, some of them are in different three letter organizations on TV these days. So it's really interesting to go back and see what's going on there. Uh, so thank you so much, everybody. And until next time, please support Indie Wrestling and both sides. Yeah, well said. Oh. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.